You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Hey, Derek. Are Derek. we going to have nicknames for each other each episode? You're great. Oh, you're great. I'm under boob. That's the original. That's the OG. So you're Nev so Nips. Great. I'm under boob. Oh, wait. Really let's good. not give away the studio production value we have here. It's pretty, pretty low. We're <laughs> probably going to sing anyway, so we might as well just use it. That's a good point. I'm... I think so. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to get closer? No. <laughs> Just put my legs down. Okay. There we go. You're great. You're great. You're great. <laughs> did you start it before? You're great. <laughs> we did. You're great. You're great. You're the greatest. You're the great. You're the great around. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hug Life Podcast Telecommuting Edition. Yes. Yeah. Brought to you by Skype. Brought to you by Skype. Will they give us money for that? Or will yeah, they, they make to. us pay money for that? <laughs> the rule, if you say it, then they have to give it to you. Oh, for sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Monica Nevy. And I'm Mike Coletta. And this is the podcast, and we are in two different states, and this is exciting. I've it always wanted ex- to do this. I've always wanted to try it out. I mean, I don't think it's the best because we can't really make true eye contact. I'm just staring into a yellow light on a camera. But, yeah. And you can't even find where the microphone is. You're just looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just put your Neither. eyeball against the laptop. Like, is this where the microphone is? <laughs> you can see. It's like Skyping your grandma. I'm yeah, just... It's exactly what it's like. I was just about to say <laughs> like, that. Looking at the keyboard. Like, are they hiding it somewhere? I don't know where it is. Whatever. Dude, when computers what? first came out, like as like personal computers, my grandma got super into a holiday card creating program like she would like <laughs> dive hours and hours and hours into it like these are the things people obsess over you know i got video games some people love christmas cards it's fine yeah it's great i mean that's nice though because then you send somebody a nice thing after you make it oh yeah i like it so, so that's okay shout out to your grandma shout out to grandma <laughs> um do you want to do let's plug our shows real quick okay do you want to plug yours first Sure. All right. Monica Nevy, her shows. <laughs> Wednesday the 14th, I'm in Wallingford at Murphy's Pub. That's in Seattle. Uh, the 15th, I'm at Pies and Pints. That's in the U District of Seattle. <laughs> the 16th, I'm at Nine Yards Brewing. That's in Kenmore, Washington. 17th, I'm at Hi-Fi Brewing in Redmond. And then I'm at Wingman Brewing in Tacoma for Casey's late show it's 11 now it's not midnight anymore whatever oh and then sunday the 18th stuff, i'm at tacoma comedy club uh with sarah colonna that's wonderful those are yeah. some great dates all right i am making my way up the day this comes out i will be at the mill casino in coos bay oregon doing Ooh. two shows and then friday saturday I will be uh, at the Chadwick's. The Chadwick's? That's what they call it now. The Chadwick's. <laughs> Chad. It's really special. It's really fancy now. At Chadwick's. Uh, the Chad. <laughs> you and the Chad? At Chadwick's in Medford. And then on the 21st, I will be at a casino. And I forgot the name of it. And I'm really good at uh, doing this. <laughs> Where is it? It's. I think it's. You got to take a ferry. I want to say it's in Paulsbo or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? No. But anyway, after that, I'm at the parlor for all the Christmas and Christmas. Right. Kingston? Is That's, that where it That is? might be it. That might be it. I'm oh, not entirely it's sure. It's called the Point Casino. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. It's the Point <laughs> Casino. Monica Nevy, I'm telling you about my dates. <laughs> <laughs> I like to play, like, deductive reasoning games where I'm like, what casino could it be? Huh? <laughs> is it the Emerald Queen? No. <laughs> is it Snoqualmie? No. You gotta take the ferry. You gotta take the ferry. Um, uh, also don't forget you can rate and review and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. You can do that. Yeah. That helps us out a lot. And then I think Monica's going to give us a nice ad right now. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Have you finished all your holiday shopping yet? No. Oh, well, am I supposed I to answer? <laughs> Oh, this is one of those, oh, oh, one of those call and response commercials. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No. If you don't answer the questions at home, you should be answering the questions at home. I have been watching TV wrong my whole life. Hypothetically, your grandma needs a toilet that's higher up. (laughs) You can buy that on Amazon. Did you know that? A high up toilet? Well, and those, you could get the toilet or you could get just an extender for the seat. So it's up. And then your grandma can shit comfortably. You know what? I like that. You got to look out for grandma poops. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do it, too, you go 
hugglifepodcast.com. Click on our banner at the top. That's Amazon. And then you just purchase Graham's a new shitter and everything's great. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, and then you just poop as you normally would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. It's better than you normally would because it's higher up. That's right. Monica, your Twitter's at Monica Nevy. Mine's at me, Coletta. It's always been that way. It's never changed. Also, we have a <laughs> Facebook group for Hug Life Podcast, which is getting close to 500. I'm excited. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should invite people again. I like being annoying. I do too. I enjoy being annoying. Let's do it together. This will be fun. This will be a fun activity for friends. (laughs) And uh, I think anything else you want to plug? Any lexical embraces you got? I do have lexical embraces, but if you want to buy a t-shirt online, you could do that too. Oh yeah, you can do that. Go to Monica Nevy and go to her store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can do that. It's a good Christmas gift actually. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one. Okay, lexical embraces. Are we ready? I am so ready. First up, Joseph and Evelyn. They've come to a bunch of my shows already. They're hug bugs for sure. They bought shirts. Yeah, lexically embraced. Did you feel that oral hug? It happened. Yeah, I hugged the screen. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Then Flood Valley Brewing in Chehalis, because they were fucking jacked to put on a comedy show, and I love that. They were excited? Yeah, he was so excited. Like Tell me people about should, it. It's like a newer business, you know, so he was like just excited to get a lot of people in there. And he was like so nice and kept coming back to like the green room area. And then one of the other bartenders would come back and be like, hey, Chris, we need you out here. And he's like, oh, OK, and like <laughs> leaves. But he was just super excited. And it was a great show. It was really fun. Dude, um, that's, a, that's a good lexical embrace. That's good. Like and it. then uh, finally, last lexical embrace is to... The dugong that uh, Hugbug <gasps> went, went swimming with in oh my God. Australia <laughs> because uh, she, we told her, you're great. You know? I'm going to cry. I want to meet a goo- dugong so bad. Yeah. If you guys hadn't heard, uh, one of our Hugbugs, Glenn, he's in Australia and he went swimming with a dugong and I got a text message <laughs> one time very early that was like i saw a dugong and i was like no way and then like a week later he was like i went swimming with one i was like what dude that's a dream come true for us right she purchased a t-shirt for the dugong that said you're great and then you could wear it yeah do you think would you go you'd go swimming with a dugong right yeah i mean who wouldn't i'd be upset if people didn't if someone said no <laughs> to that huh, that terrible thing can i lexically embrace two people Yes, please do. At the Legacy Room, Roy and Jimmy, or the Roy and Jimmy thing. Yeah. And I did a show there. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. It was really great. That's good. That's good. Good. Comedy's great. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear myself feedback on your computer right now. Can you? Yeah. It, was, it just started doing it. Maybe I just need to speak quieter. Maybe that's the problem. I think well, I'm just really loud. Of all times to figure that out. Uh. <laughs> right in the middle of it. <laughs> That's how we do tech here. You know that? We just we go could, for it. We could turn it down. I could turn it down, but I mean, what's the fun in that? So I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that was it. Are you ready for uh, the segment that we always intro with you? Yep. All right. I'm ready for it. Hey, guys. Good news. Oh, that was a great intro. Here's a good one. Uh, a Bronx librarian has been bringing a suitcase full of books to a nearby homeless shelter and reading to homeless children for the last eight years. What? Oh. <laughs> What's wrong? What happened? Was there some miscommunication in the... Uh... Yeah, this might... <laughs> this might be the only problem. I was like, oh, what if this freezes or whatever? But you're sitting kind of far back, so I thought... Oh, sorry. Here, let me get forward. Here we go. I don't know why... I thought you said a Bronx Labrador. <laughs> so I was picturing like a dog dragging a suitcase of books around. He's like, I'm going to come read all the books to you kids. Just don't even have any raw meat in front of me, though, because I go crazy. Once you said he was reading, I was like, oh, OK, that's not a dog then. But it was a Bronx teacher. But that's close. Okay. <laughs> I should say closer, though. That's right. We're not used to this. Uh, his name is Colbert Nembard. He uh, <laughs> is as his name. He strolled to the uh, Cor- Cor- Crotona Inn homeless shelter in the Morrisania branch library. I don't know where that is in New York. People from New York will probably know that. And uh, he he does uh, he just reads reads to the kids for the past eight years. It's so nice. I like that reading. Is so nice. That's awesome. This is a good one, right? 
Yeah. Cry. Write a movie about it, only make it a dog. Only <laughs> make it a dog? Much like What's Santa Paws? Uh, C- Colbert Nembard. Santa Paws. Don't get me started. Santa Paws? Uh, <laughs> Colbert is a great dog's name. Colbert. Colbert, <laughs> get out of the trash. You're in the trash, Colbert. <laughs> No, you got real southern. Colbert, <laughs> stop attacking that child. <laughs> Jesus. That's what my dog would do if it was named Colbert. And he'd be like, "Okay, I'm gonna read to him instead." <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is this is kind of um, more of a like a weird like future thing, not necessarily an uplifting news, but I thought it was really interesting. You ready mm-hmm. for it? It's, it's sciencey. Yeah. Uh, Biofabrication Institute announced for Hurston Health Project. Australia is the first place to use stem cells to create like li- like new limbs and new organs for people. Oh. Like it's happening. It's right now. It's the future. It's happening right now. Like, hey, I need a liver. Oh, well, just copy one from your DNA. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. Instead of having to wait for somebody to die. Yeah, dude. That's right. Yeah, that's very positive. It's very positive. Isn't it nice? Yes. Australia, way to go. You got dugongs and... Yeah, you can swim with a dugong, and if you get attacked by a shark and it takes your arm off, they'll get you a new arm. That's amazing. It's so great. It's like a foolproof plan. I wonder if that's like a problem for them, needing new arms because of sharks. Maybe. Isn't there that famous surfer from Australia, or is she from California, that her got her arm bitten off by a shark? And then she's like super positive because she's like, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep surfing. She's American, but I don't know where from. Yeah, I don't know either. We should know more before we start talking about things. We should. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long since we've actually done this. I feel weird about it. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, final story. Okay. India unveils the world's largest solar power plant. Uh, this facility in Kamuthi, Tamil Nadu, has a capacity of 648 megawatts and covers an area of 10 square kilometers. It's a solar farm. It's bigger than the Topaz solar farm in California, which is 550. So it's now the biggest solar is power. It like a bunch of solar panels or is it like one big it's, one? It's a bunch of solar panels. Like, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of looks like, uh, <laughs> like it's like, it's like, a, like just like sh- little rows and rows of solar panels. I got Isn't it. Nice? That's awesome. If I move too fast in the video, just go like this. Whoosh, whoosh. Like yeah, really, it's. It's got like a trail. You're a ghost. I'm a ghost. Oh. Two arms for a little bit. <laughs> I mean, two two arms on one arm. You know what I mean? <laughs> two, arms, two arm, one arm? One arm, two arm? <laughs> one arm becomes two arms. And that's the good news right there. Monica. Hey, guys. That was good news. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Home Ever. phone going off. Monica just left, you guys. Now we're all alone. It's just the two of us. Two of us? Maybe there's group listening. I don't know. Let, no, me, I, let me know how many people you listen to like uh, in a group. If you guys listen in a group, let me know. What's up, Monica? You're back. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Did you just unhook it or something? Or <laughs> No. I just uh, hung up on them. <laughs> oh, man. Was it a telemarketer? Or was it someone yeah. you know? Does anyone call a home phone anymore? or just tell? They're just telemarketer machines. That's, That's all they are. My grandma. That's it. Oh, man. I don't want to get a home phone ever. Yeah, there's no real reason. In fact, the first people in my family to not have a landline were my grandparents. Really? Yeah. Up they were like, we don't need it. They're pooping high and no house phone. Yeah, not yet. I didn't get it for her yet. You didn't get it for her yet, but you're going to? Secret. Mm-hmm. She doesn't listen to this, does she? She's going to get it spoiled for her. What? She's going to get it spoiled for her, the gift, if, you, if she listens to this. Oh. Yeah, I don't think she listens to the podcast, but... She doesn't? Oh, that's too bad. Well, that's okay. Now she gets... She's getting her other stuff, now. too. Other stuff, too. How's Seattle been? Rainy. Is it rainy? Yeah, it's but been great. It fun? Oh, it snowed, too. I saw your Snapchat about it. Well, yeah. Did you make a snowman? No. Did you throw snowballs at someone you know? No, it was weird because I woke up and my mom was like, it's snowing because I'm still... 12 and i'm excited about that and so it's like just started to snow and then i got up at nine and there was some snow but then that day it melted by like noon and i had to write some stuff and then when it snowed the next time it was only really in renton like was where because i was in mill creek and i thought it was going to be really bad but it wasn't it was worse here and then by the time i woke up it was pretty much gone oh wow so it didn't stay long enough but it's supposed to snow again this week so 
By the way, I think it's nice that you still enjoy snow. And, uh, I love it. It's good. I love all things winter, Christmas, holidays. As I do get older and it starts, like when I was up there and it would snow and I have to go to work, I'd just be like, well, shit. Like you get really upset. Yeah. Cameron and I were talking about it and like right now is actually the, the least excited I've been when it snows. Not for like the playing in it, but it, it if it's going to stop me from being able to do shows... Yeah, that's not good. I love comedy, and also I don't get that money if we don't do the show. <laughs> so I didn't think before, you. I didn't think you love comedy. I thought you just did it as a business kind of thing. <laughs> it is. Yes, mm-hmm. I like being really stressed out and poor. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I go for. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, no. Well, because uh, before you know you had school or work that you didn't want to go to, so you'd hope that it snowed. Yeah. Oh, I get it. It doesn't, yeah. it's uh, nothing, nothing related to that down here. Just lights. Lots of lights, though. Is it colder? It's colder. It's like 60 degrees. People are wearing their giant down jackets, and uh, I'm still wearing shorts. <laughs> and uh, people look at me like I'm a crazy person. But uh, all the malls are lit. I forgot about mall Christmas time. Like the way malls look, I like it. It makes you, it does work on me. It's like, oh, now I want to go shopping, you know? It's been a oh, lot that's what you want to do when there's lights? You want to go shopping? I just want to go walk around, and then I see the Lego store, and I get all excited. I get all hot oh. and bothered, you know? But What's, that happens anyways, right? Yeah, that's true. What's your favorite store in the mall? What's my favorite store in the mall? Mm-hmm. Probably Champs, honestly. Champ Sports? <laughs> yeah. Is it just shoes? That's not just shoes, right? No, there's, like, clothes and stuff, like sports clothes, but... That's good. Mostly shoes. There's. I like the Disney store, too. Disney store is so nice. Like, what if did they have Disney stores when we were kids like that? I don't remember. They only had one. Well, there was one at South Center that I remember, but that was the only one I knew of. Because now the Disney stores have Marvel and Star Wars stuff in them. It's just gone yeah, up and up they and up. Them? I saw a lot of Star Wars stuff in there. Yeah, a lot of serious stuff with that Rogue One movie coming out. I'm really excited. Wait, are people as excited about that as they were about the last one? Um, not as much, I would say, but people think it might be even better than the last one. Is it like the next one in the series? No, or? it's like a separate Star Wars. So they're doing Star Wars Episode Seven, which is what came out, but now they're doing these things called Star Wars Story, and this one's called Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and it's about the Bothan spies in this first movie that got on the Death Star plans. It's about that. Nerd. Okay, so this isn't like in the in the <laughs> no, order. No, it's not in the order. This actually takes place before A New Hope, I think. Okay, so that's why it's got a little less. Heat. Yeah, it's got a little less heat, but I think it's going to be good. They're also making a Boba Fett one and a Han Solo one, and then um, uh, gosh, Childish Gambino, Donald Glover. He's playing Han. Uh, he's playing Lance. Uh, no, not Lance. Lando Calrissian. <laughs> I almost said Lance oh, Bass. Better. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> I would have been like, I have not been paying attention to Star Wars. When did Lance, Lance Bass? Bass get- yeah, Lance Lance Bass is in Star Wars as himself, starring as himself. He wanted to go to space so bad. Um, he just saved everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. Let's 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 uh let's let's talk about uh, the positive spin today. Oh yeah, because P-spin. the P spin today is actually this is what reminded me of it because we're kind of telecommuting right now. So I just wanted to talk about commuting, like for your job, and how it could be good. Yeah, it could be good. I think. So let's say you have like a longer drive, right? Mm-hmm. To get to work, maybe traffic y, something like that. I like that time to like be alone and think to myself and stuff, you know? I will say, if you drive in a car and you turn off the radio, it's amazing what stuff you'll get done in your head yeah. when you're driving. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Or, do you know, sometimes because there's nothing significant that happens during that time, you just kind of black out when you're driving, you know? Like yeah. you get there and you're like, well, I don't remember any of it. Yeah, so maybe remember. if you turn the radio off, then you'll just get there faster in your head, you know? That's true. I'm going to try that when I drive up to Seattle. I'm going to do it. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm driving. I'm hoping I black out. <laughs> you're just going to try and black out on the way? Yeah, blackout road trip. <laughs> That'll be a fun movie. Blackout road trip. <laughs> That's the, the, the next road trip sequel. Would be where you just didn't remember anything, and then all of a sudden it's a new scene, and you're like, got to figure out how they got there. It's like Memento mixed with Road Trip. <laughs> yeah, Blackout Road Did you ever trip. see the movie Memento? Yeah, I did. I watched it for a college class I had on, it was like a literature class where we only did stuff about time travel. Oh, that's interesting. That's a very it interesting really class. Interesting. There was eight people in there, and they all hated me. Why, oh my God. why did they hate you? 
Because they were like all literature majors or like English majors or whatever, and I was the not. jock. You were just jocking yeah. it up, all jock style, like Basically, giving people noogies no. and swirlies and bullying them. I used to try and do a bit about it, but it wasn't very good. But they, he was like, the professor was really cool. But one day he like made this example that the whole class was a <laughs> was a village. So each person had like one thing that they were good at, right? And uh-huh. they would do it village so then he goes he's like like todd you would you know you're good at catching fish so you would fish and then you know sarah you're good at cooking so you would cook and monica is good at killing bears and i was like (laughs) (laughs) accurate statement i was like of all things like i get it you were in bear killing club in high school you lettered in that right i thought you did i was captain of the bear killing Killing club That's but they're fantastic. already like afraid of me and kind of intimidated. And so he was like, "Yeah, you could just kill bears. What the fuck are you talking about?" The bear killing club. Gosh, between blackout road trip and bear killing club, we have a lot of different title options right now. A lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of irons in the fire. If I was in the village, what would I do, Monica? Is there a playing video games function for the village? I don't know. Maybe a tech type, or you could. Fix I, I do, I do IT for the village. You do IT for the village? <laughs> <laughs> but it's really boring because there's no technology. So there's just like, hey, Mike, I found this cord, but we don't know what it goes to. We don't know what it does. So can you just figure that out? I'm like, it's dead. <laughs> it's just a dead cord. <laughs> Nothing there. <laughs> Glad I could help. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> village IT guy. He still never shows up for some reason. I mean, I'm always off time. And I always have just tons of Mountain Dew by my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, Dennis from Jurassic Park gave IT people a bad name. I feel like that's something that people should be mad about, you know? Which one was he? He was the fat guy that stole the DNA in the first oh, movie. Yeah. And he just was like, eating like candy bars all the time. And just like my, oh. Sam Jackson got mad at him because his desk was all covered in candy and soda. Sam yeah, Jackson. maybe that's why I don't like IT people. I Is just that, have harboring subliminal feelings about it. About uh, from, uh, from the old Jurassic Park movie? Yeah, absolutely. I got gotcha. you. I feel you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love IT people. They that's, fix my <laughs> That's good because uh, I just told all the IT people what you just said, and they're pretty perturbed, actually. You guys, you guys have a Facebook group? Or yeah, something? we all talk. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Big group text. All right, commuting. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I tell you something that I love about commuting now? It's a new thing. Yeah. Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. Uh like, I mean, because I never, like, well, you listen to music before and, like, zone out, but now podcasts, it's like, you get excited. For, like, I'm excited for the long drive because I have a bunch of stuff I want to listen to on my way up there. Yeah, and when it's, like, stuff or music you've listened to a bunch, you're like, I still like it, but I'm tired of hearing it over and over again. And then it makes your music better when you come back, you switch back, you know? You've been listening to a couple podcasts, and you're like, oh, I'll do music for a little bit. Yeah. And you're interested again. That's right. I mean, I... And also, you can listen to this podcast. Oops. <laughs> you see what I did there? Do a little shameless yeah. plug? I think we I think we knew what you were doing, but yeah. Yeah, you saw what I was doing? <laughs> you, saw what I, you, saw, you, you saw right through me? <laughs> well, I didn't listen to podcasts until a year after we had been doing this. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, I really didn't start listening to them until we were on the road. Oh. Oh, yeah, when we yeah. did, like, when you, we started listening to your mom's house and stuff. Yeah, and... um I like it. You're right. I mean, especially when we're in L.A., you, most everything takes, you know, 40 minutes or whatever to get to. So, yeah, can, I, like, that's I'm realizing actually now I'm like I'm running out of podcasts. Cause I'm driving so much that I have to, like, get there on time. <laughs> like, oh, I just like I'm just like I'm running out of stuff to listen to. Like I actually today was like driving and I'm like, oh, I have nothing downloaded to listen to on my podcast. Very boring drive home. Oh, Very no. boring drive home. Yeah. Listen to the radio. I do actually like, ter- I think terrestrial radio is a reason that commuting is great. Yeah, some of those, like, did you listen to morning shows when I, you work? I never listened to morning shows, really, when I worked. Like, but I had, like, for example, Jubal's show. Like, people in my office would listen to it, and they like, loved it and stuff. And then I would, like, try to catch it. But I took a train, so I'd have, like, ten minutes of Jubal, and then I'd get on the train and I'd leave. So I'd, I'd never... <laughs> right. I'd usually catch, like, one phone tap or, like, a bunch of Miley Cyrus. It was one of those two things. It was never... Yeah, else. I... When I was going to work, I would probably listen to Jubal, but... Because um, the Mustang didn't have... It only had radio. The CD player and stuff didn't work. <laughs> uh-huh. So I had to listen to the radio. But when I was younger, 
we would always listen to the T Man in the morning, like on the way to school. T Man, who's T Man? You never listened to the T Man on Cube? No. Yeah, he did was Cube, hilarious. Did Cube go away? Was that like a thing? Yeah. What happened? Jubal. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh! Basically, I like this. This is juicy. They goss. were like juicy. They were by history. far the most popular morning radio show when I was younger, like by far. And then Kiss like started making a comeback because they did more top 40 and not just hip hop. Um, and then when Jubal went to move in, it really like people just kind of stopped listening to Cube. Wow. That's the yeah. power of Jubal. Yeah. That's cool. I never, morning I don't know. I didn't know I you were an amateur morning radio historian. Yes. Just specifically Seattle. Um, cause they tried to put the breakfast club in Seattle for a while, which is like Charlemagne, the God and, um, Angela. Charlemagne the God is someone's DJ name? Yeah, well, that's his name. It's Charlemagne, yeah. Oh, I, He's thought, like, I thought his his first name was Charlemagne, middle name the, and last name the God. <laughs> God. Well, that's like what he's called. I don't know the whole history of it, but I actually do really like their show. But you hear about him in rap songs all the time, and he really just was like a DJ, like a host or whatever, a radio host. So... Dude, it can make it very popular. I like it. I like. Do you ever listen to AM radio? Um, we used to listen to like nine fifty, like KJR sports stuff. AM radio. But. I like AM radio when you're driving in the middle of nowhere because it gets really weird. It gets real Doesn't, weird. Dude, there's been a couple of times where we would stop and or find like whatever NPR stations or whatever, and it's always some random. It's basically like the public access channel of the radio, you know. <laughs> really. When you get out there, and people like can just have their own shows, and you're like, "What is happening? What are you doing?" That's interesting. I like listening to crazy people talk, though. I know, and usually it's like, I mean, not. I mean, this is a very blatant generalization, but it's. I think it's 100 percent true. Is it's usually always like super conservative, like yeah. shock jock kind of radio. Like it's like a mix of shock yeah. jock and super conservative radio, which is a weird yeah. thing. That is fun. Well, and that, I mean, that's kind of the point of even the the bigger shows. They call people and shit because they want you to hear crazy people. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's they're like, we'll get you to work with this this crazy person. Here you go. <laughs> crazy person. Listen. So crazy people. That's a good part of commuting. Yeah, there you go. Crazy people. Oh man, <laughs> and we're not even talking about crazy people on the road. Crazy people. Oh, yeah. Driving in general. Dude, like my favorite thing when I would drive in the morning is I would drive and I, the things that people do while they try to drive their car and commute. Like people reading it's books or crazy. doing like eyeliner or like trying to do. Putting on their makeup. You're eating, but like a, a meal that you need two hands yeah. for. Like, <laughs> like a plate. Are you spaghetti a, for like, breakfast? <laughs> Okay, that's not a bad thing at all. A little, little carbonara, a little egg in there, you know, a little bacon. Going, you know? well, you're driving, though. Oh, I guess that's true. I mean, why not? You'd have to hold the plate in. What I'm trying to say is I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to do that. I'm Can gonna... you drive with your knees? Yes. Yeah? yeah? I'm not good at it. I think I have my legs are too short. But... I think you got to like, you got to kind of, pos- I'm going to do a little, a little visual thing for myself <laughs> here. But you got to like, uh, okay, here we go. You got to like, uh. Like <laughs> lift up this knee and then really like shimmy it around. You can only really use one, and then the other one's kind of an emergency knee that you use if you're like going too far. That's do you what do I, that sometimes. Do you take both of your feet off the ground like that? Yeah, sometimes. I don't normally have. I don't. Well, I don't normally have to. Honestly, I don't normally. I just like go tippy toes. Is what I do. Oh, but, I see. And then it's only. I only do it when I'm really trying to like keep the car straight on a freeway while I'm like say eating spaghetti or like doing my eyeliner or something. <laughs> How often do you think people are like jacking off while they're driving? Dude, this is a topic <laughs> that I would bring up in college because I knew multiple friends that would do the drive from Pullman to Seattle. And I'm like, did you ever jack off while driving? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, I never did. I never did that. And I feel good I that I never did. I don't even know how you would do that. Like, I'm just like, what are you like? Like, there's a mess after work. <laughs> <laughs> And can't people see in the car? Yeah, I mean that too, but also like cleanup is a nightmare. (laughs) But then like you don't, you're not thinking properly during the end of that. You know what I mean? Like you, what if you crash? That's true. I I think, I think uh, J.O. in a car is way easier for ladies to do. Right? Maybe. Would it be easier? 
as far as like not dying because <laughs> there's going to be a point as a man where you're like finishing and there's going to be like a good 10 to 20 seconds where you have no idea what's going on in front of you i think that's the same thing for a girl though really but there wouldn't know. be as much like oh no where to go or whatever you know, i don't like know that. how women's sex works so i don't really know <laughs> we've what, been over that part <laughs> yeah I recently was telling I was telling Roy and Jimmy how that one day we were like I was like saying something about a vulva and then we took a quiz about what like <laughs> how, what a vagina is you and I because I was like yeah. I don't know this like there was an internet quiz on do you, how well do you know a vagina and I didn't I didn't know it very well <laughs> there was a couple things where I was like I don't even know that so. <laughs> oh man uh, uh, there's what I had something else um, what did I have oh. My whole thought is like a commute for like a train or a bus is completely different because at that point you can just bring whatever you would be hanging out in your living room with minus a TV. Like so a book, like a book changed my life when I was like taking the train and uh, drive, like riding the bus. Is that the first book you read? Yeah. First book I ever read was on a bus (laughs) when I was 22. (laughs) Went all through college, English degree, no books. Did it pretty crazy. I wish I could ride a train to work. That's I not, realized there's a lot of flaws in what I just no, said. No, no, but like I, I get that because people like were like when I told them that I was driving the train, some people were like, "That's awesome! Like that's a great thing that you get to do." And I'm like, "Is Can you it? say you're driving the train?" I, I was driving the train. I drive trains <laughs> in my spare time. I am the IT guy in the village and the train conductor. Oh, wait for the next one. Thank yeah. you. Wait, what? <laughs> Why would you do that? I'm the only one. Is the IT guy's driving the train. No, thank you. Can I ask you a question about Christmas? Sure. What are your thoughts on um, small electronic train around Christmas tree? Yay or nay? Oh, yes. Around the tree? Yeah. We'd always do that as a kid. We had a, a train that would go in a circle around the tree. Because that's how good. it would that have is... to go around. That's the only way it could go around. <laughs> it's like a Christmas thing, right? A little train like around a model the tree. train? Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, because I do like a Christmas village, you know? Ooh, ooh. Dude, I... I was really into a Christmas village when I was a kid and my parents were still together. <laughs> oh God. And just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't know where my village went. You don't know where the village went? No. Did my mom sell my village? <laughs> Maybe. I'm the IT guy of that village. What is she doing? <laughs> they need me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you could put a little train around the village or something, you know, Seattle center used to have like in the center house, they used to have that huge, Model village, train set. like the train that went all the way around it. Yeah. That was like my favorite. I will say that there was one time that Katie and I, well, I say her first name all the time. Who cares anymore? Uh, we went to uh, <laughs> the Pacific Science Center and it was when they were doing the model train expo. And that room was like so awesome. Just the amount of stuff that they had, like, cause they had Lego model trains and then they had like, like other toy model trains, like a rector set model trains. It's cool. I mean, the model trains. You're like rocking back and forth. You're so excited. I'm into right model now. trains right now. <laughs> I'm so into model trains. Just in the yeah, corner. Train, but trains in general, like maybe that's why I like riding trains actually like as a mode of transportation because it reminds me of like Christmas time. You know, like yeah. snow trains, Polar Express. I don't know. I think of Hogwarts. <laughs> that's what I think of when I think of trains. Well, Hogwarts is Christmassy sometimes. That's true. It's very true. I was um, I was actually thinking about doing a tra- I want. I kind of want to take a train trip. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I yeah. would always do that. I love taking the train from Seattle to Portland. That was like one of my favorite things to do. But I want to take a longer train trip, like days train trip. We could do like a Hug Life Amtrak tour. What? Sponsored by Amtrak. Maybe. Dude, that'd be fun. I love Maybe it. they would just give us free tickets. Ow, I just hit my hand on the coffee table. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that'd be nice if they gave us free tickets, but I don't know if that would happen. But we can ask him. Like, I'll call yeah. Mr. Amtrak and see what he says. Bob uh, Amtrak's his name. I know Susan Amtrak. You know Susan, that's his cousin twice removed. <laughs> oh, I, I don't it was know what that twice. means when people say twice removed. I don't understand why, because it makes it sound like you <laughs> took him away. You stole it. Yeah, him. you got divorced and then remarried or something. This like is that's my what cousin it sounds twice like. removed. Like I killed my two other cousins, and this is the closest one left. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a weird like through marriage and then your cousins. I don't know. It's I don't understand it. But I I get very under, uh, confused when it comes to like family things. Like if it's your great grandmother's sister's son, like what is that? Like, what is that? Right. I have no idea. What I have that a is. very 
couple of confusing families too. So we'll like get together and I'll be like, I don't even know what you are to me, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> who are you? <laughs> you're just screaming at him. <laughs> you're my dad's cousin's granddaughter. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> What's happening? Do you, uh, do you have anything else you have to be spin with the uh, commuting? Do you have anything else you can think of before mm-hmm. we move on to the two five turnaround? You could carpool. Oh, and then you get to hang out with friends. It's a great one. Yeah, and it would be better for the environment. That's right. You're thinking about Mother Earth and Mother Friendship. Yes. I don't know if anyone mother. calls it Mother Friendship mother. or not. <laughs> mother Earth and Sister Friendship. Sister then. Friendship? Yeah. Sister Friendship all your time. <laughs> Father time. Mother Earth. Sister, sister Friendship. friendship. What yeah. is the brother? Brother Bear. Brother Bear. <laughs> That's just a Disney <laughs> movie. Now we're going to get sued. Brotherly love? I don't know what that is. That's friendship, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's kind of yeah. That is friendship still. Philadelphia. I'm not it's sure. All, it all comes back to Father Time, Mother Earth. All comes back to Philadelphia. That's all that happens. <laughs> it all comes back there. I think that's it, right? Commuting. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Let's well. Let's do. The, do you want to do the top five turnaround? We're at like 35 minutes right now. I'd be down. Perfect. I love it. I love top, top five turnaround. Top five turnaround. Satellite edition. So, yeah. Satellite? I don't know if this uses satellites. I just feel like it does. I feel like it's fancy. There's probably some type of satellite involved right now, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe the IT guy. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just all <laughs> landlines. Landline? We're Skyping through landline right now? Mm-hmm. Just over the phone. This, I'm on dial-up. You're not on dial-up? <laughs> <laughs> it's my Earthlink account. <laughs> oh. I might run out of this AOL disk real quick, so I might have to put another one in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I picked uh, the top five worst FaceTime fails or Skype fails. Like oh, because that's what we're doing right now. We're Skyping it, yeah. The bad things about doing FaceTime or Skyping. It's okay. not like a specific instant, but the bad things, you know. Can I, can I guess one of them? Uh, Actually, no, no, I'll, I'll, no, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I, I, I'll wait. <laughs> throw another thing into I'll wait. the game i'll wait until it's until that oh that's giving me mic feedback i can't sit like that i gotta go like this you could just go i knew it when that one comes yeah up. okay i will all right i'm ready okay. <laughs> sorry i got really excited so you're gonna tell us why this would be a good thing if you were facetiming or skyping someone and this happened okay okay first one it freezes on a really awkward face like you're making a dumb face and it freezes and it makes a dumb face and it freezes and why that would be a good thing because it's yep. funny and you could screenshot it and then you could put it in the company newsletter. <laughs> there was a. So at, you're skyping for work at this point. Yeah, at, well, this at my old at my old job, which I've never actually talked about on here. I think there was a point where one of the managing bosses climbed into a shredding bin to grab something that he dropped in there, and it was really funny and everyone was laughing. And I didn't take a picture of it because I was worried I was going to get in trouble. And everyone else was like, you needed to take a picture of that. And they would have put it on a slideshow. And it would have been funny. I'm like, oh, see, I don't know office humor. But that's office humor. Like, if it freezes on a funny face and you pause it, that's good stuff. That is, and that if, is, your, if it happens to your friend, then you just put it on Facebook. And everyone gets to see how dumb they look. It would be funnier at work because if, I, you know, if you were my boss and then your face freezed weird and then I emailed it to everyone, hilarious. Yeah, that would be funny. That would be good. I mean, like, here's the note from our meeting. From our Just meeting from <laughs> Mr. Colita. Yes. Hilarious. That's fun. You can shame people. That's yeah, a good thing. You can body shame them. Wait, what? <laughs> what did it freeze on? I don't know. What were Fa- you doing? I'm face shaming people. In the Skype meeting. Uh, okay, number two. Uh, someone's too close to the screen. Like that? You can, yeah, you can't see anything. Well, it's funny because you keep closing your eyes when you get really close to the screen. Well, it's bright. It's bright. Yeah, your, okay. your eyes don't look dilated. They're good. <laughs> they look good. <laughs> Tell me if I'm going to die or not. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> um, I, 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 if someone's too close to the screen. Or too far away or something. Why that's a good thing? Well, if someone's yep. too close, like for me, sometimes the picture is really fuzzy and you want to identify that it's actually them. So if they get really close to the screen, then you can know. You can be like, hey. <laughs> There's um, Terry's her hellacious mole that's on her front <laughs> fair face. And now I know it's there. So now I know oh, it's there. Oh, I knew that was I've you. I've confirmed her identity. <laughs> and if someone's really far away, well, maybe they're an uggo and you don't want to look at them. So that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Positive spin. They're an uggo. <laughs> an uggo. Good Lord. It's okay. like an ego. 
but better. Lego my uggo? <laughs> Lego my uggo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number three. Uh, oh, if you're FaceTiming someone and then one of your friends is like yelling, this could happen on the phone too, I guess, like saying shit they shouldn't be. So let's say you were FaceTiming your girlfriend and then somebody was like, hey, your side chick's here or whatever. And then. You know what? If someone says something embarrassing, then I believe that's fate and it was meant to happen. Like in that situation, then good. Now it's out there. Now you're, you got caught and you deserved it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You shouldn't have side chicks. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, even though I have like 38,000 side chicks, <laughs> I, you shouldn't have side chicks. <laughs> have we told them about that joke yet? We I, have, was say, I don't know if they know that joke. Yeah. I just talked to, I, I, it really just bothers our roommate, Mitch. So I just say I always have side chicks, even though I'd never be that kind of person ever. And no, it's, it's it, fun. We picked Mike because he's the least likely to have a side chick. So mm-hmm. that's why it's funny. Yeah, that's why it's... Well, I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, th- you should apologize to my 38,000 side chicks. You'd be like, I'm going to go hang out in my room. We're like, oh, with your side chicks in there. But, <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Side chick <laughs> Xbox and the other one 360. My side chick Swords and Whores. Swords and Whores. Swords and Whores, yeah. Swords and Whores. That's what I call it, video games. You nailed it. You did a good job. Okay. Okay. So it's gonna. So if they are saying something stupid, then you, you get caught. You wouldn't yeah, be a liar. Yeah, and you deserve to be caught for that. That's good. Okay. <laughs> I'm really good at this game. <laughs> FaceTime justice with Mike Colonna. That's right. It's my new TV show. It's only gonna be on True TV. Or Spike at late night. What if it's like this is number four? Okay, number what four. If it's like freezing, like uh, coming in and out, like um, is it the football refs? Their microphones, you know? <laughs> oh, when they go in and out. Yeah, why don't they ever fucking work? But. Okay, I like this. If you are, for example, we're recording this call. If it went in and out like that, then you can alter the audio and use that to shame them at work just as much. Oh, <laughs> like, I see you could add things that it would sound mm-hmm. like I was answering them. Yeah, that would be, be fun. That is fun. Also, it's a good thing to do if it goes in and out and you don't want to be on the call, you can just be like, hey, I can't hear you. We should try this again later. <laughs> and then you get to the yeah. the call. <laughs> so that's good. Oh, man. I forgot about how stressful it was arguing on the phone with someone you were dating when it, you couldn't hear him. <laughs> it's oh, like yeah. an argument and you're like, well, I guess I'll have to call you back later. But now we hate each other for two hours. Or Dude, I wonder how many breakups have been caused by AT&T's shitty coverage. Ooh. Yeah. Probably a lot. You got to get that statistic going. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we should. If you have a story about being broken up with. Email us we- at huglifepodcast at gmail.com. It sounds like a class action lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> the office of Nevi and Coletta? <laughs> yes. Okay, five. Okay. Not realizing that it's on or, <laughs> or that somebody can see you like Dude, there was you naked or something i don't there know there was this um there, well that was going to be my thing that i was thinking that like if oh. like someone stands up and you learn they're not wearing pants like that classic gag on the <laughs> webcam you know right. but <clears throat> there's like all these news stories that come out on facebook like the clickbait ones they're like mark zuckerberg and and jeff bezos don't have their web have a thing covering their webcam all the time and you should too like people are like always yeah. watching you you yeah. know and uh I, I don't know the, the amount of like like it's like the uh, American Pie thing with like him and the Nadia girl. It's like that. Yeah. Like um, if you learn like yeah, it sucks that happened, but then you might get internet famous. That okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Was that I a like good when one? you have to reach hard for it. I'm really reaching hard, reaching hard, reaching uh, far. You can be Jason Biggs. Mm-hmm. You can be Jason Biggs if that happens to you. Yeah, I mean. Oh, whatever. Never mind. Now I'm thinking about that movie too much. Um, <laughs> tell, you, tell me about it. Uh, tell me. Well, she's way too hot for him. And yeah. So he kept trying to cover the camera, which is respectful. But mm-hmm. if you're trying to show off. You should have to cover the camera. Know. Yeah. Yeah. You said something recently about. Uh, what was it? Something. Um, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Damn it. Do you like how that works, Monica? Yeah. Some things never change. It's just out of my head completely. I don't know. That wasn't a very good one. I need to figure out. So, what's a good reason for so you to something accidentally? Something like caught. They could get caught doing something they weren't supposed to. It's kind of like that other one where I'm like, maybe they deserve to get caught finally. Like they've been doing something bad. Yeah, they thought know? they turned their Skype off, but really they're just accidentally sending someone them doing drugs or something. Yeah, yeah. I, my whole thing is like when people have their 
house like cameraed up and then they're able to access it on their smartphone if something oh, yeah. comes off like what if you get caught doing something weird on that you know like yeah. pooping in the fridge or something <laughs> now i'm concerned you've been pooping in the fridge i have not been pooping in the fridge just your pillowcase <laughs> Grout. just kidding uh, i i like that that's uh, <laughs> that's what the cameras are for though right in that situation to catch specifically people shitting in the fridge. Yeah. No, to <laughs> catch people doing stuff to your house. They're not supposed to really. I mean, really actually the benefit of having that happen of having it accidentally on is if you're a house cat or a dog and you're doing something shitty to someone's house. And by when I say shitty, I mean like pooping on the floor or like, Hey, the dog has been like secretly chewing on the cabinets. <laughs> no idea. Oh, no. Right. Yeah. Yeah. who has been eating all the, Candy. It's the cat. The cat. Cats love candy. Cats don't like candy. It doesn't matter. Cats love chicken. Candy. Candy made from chicken. Oh, that, chicken that, candy. Yeah, you know, you heard of it. <laughs> Everyone knows about it. <laughs> I had to write articles about cat food and uh, high protein diet. I didn't realize how high protein cat diets were supposed Dude, to be. Dude, we saw that on the line in your living room. They should only eat meat. Really, like they only need yeah. to eat meat. It's crazy. Yeah, I th- well, I thought that was, yeah, that's true. I can't believe I you pig. forgot that documentary we watched together. I know. I, I really should have referenced some of that in my writing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty upset with you, but it's okay. You're still my friend. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Did I do good? Is that what yeah, you wanted? Yeah, that was great. Is that good? That was a fun one. I had a good time. I liked it. It was great. I think we need, we need to do the quiz now, though. Yep. And the quiz, we're going to do two Christmas quizzes, one this week and one next week. And this one is... I love Christmas. Monica loves Christmas, so that's why we're doing it, is what weird Christmas ornament are you? And it said, don't lie, you've always wanted to know, is like the subtitle, which I think is a little risque. sounds like mildly like... So are they going to be like naughty Christmas ornaments? A dildo-shaped ornament. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think... Oh, are we ready to go? Do you have it up? You ready to rock? Mm-hmm. All right. The first question is pick a Christmassy drink. And the options are hot chocolate, eggnog, apple cider, or mulled wine. I have only had three of those because I have no idea what mulled wine is. I think it's heated. Ew, like hot wine? Yeah. I, well, there's other stuff because like mulling spices is like heating them up and putting them in stuff, I think. Interesting. So it would be like spices but warm in wine. Hmm. I what do you uh, what do you what do you think about eggnog? Do you like eggnog? I don't like eggnog really. I'm not a big fan but either. You know who? Honestly, I'll... I don't know if I've had it in a really long time I though. I don't think I've, I've had it since I was a little kid either. It kind of reminds well, me of like tapioca tasting. I don't really like that. I like tapioca though, but when you're a kid, you just hate stuff because it's different. It just looks gross or whatever, yeah. or other people don't like it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. What would you like to choose, Monica? I'd like to choose apple cider. Ooh, that was going to be my choice. I'm going to go hot chocolate then. Either one. Okay. Uh, let's go. The next question is: Pick a snowman. We have a snowman with a pink scarf. Ooh. Classic snowman. Two twig arms. Three per- part body. No face. Uh, a very like conventional snowman with a face and a carrot nose and everything. And then a hockey snowman holding a hockey stick. So which would you like to choose, Monica? Which which snowman? I like the snow lady with the scarf. With the scarf. Okay. I think I'm going to choose the top right one because that's what all of my snowmen look like as a kid. So I'm going to have that. I want that, you know. Without a face? Without a face. I didn't have the stuff to make the face. I felt pretty bad about it. Uh, I always get faces and then put, like, bikinis on them and stuff. Oh. Like they're like they're just going out today at the beach? Well, yeah, I did that, like, the last time it snowed in Seattle. So I was still, like, working and I was, like, 24. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this lady was walking by with her kid. And she saw it because I had built it on the front of the car. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> her kid's like four. And the little girl goes, oh, look, it's a snowman. And then the mom was like, well, actually, it's a snow lady. And she goes, wait, how do you know? And uh, the mom had to go, well, it has breasts. <laughs> <laughs> I had to cover up them boobers. And I, and I was just like, she's right, obviously. Yeah. She, she nailed it there. <laughs> the next question, <laughs> pick a wrapping paper. We have a palm tree wrapping paper, a classic uh, giant fat Santa, um, a tr- like kind of a multicolored, like, tie-dye Christmas tree one and then one that actually looks like a Santa shirt with like a belt and the buttons which one would you like to choose Monica 
I think I'm going to go with the uh, the Santa shirt suit thing. Okay, I think I'm going to go with the, the tropical theme. I think that's nice. Really? Yeah, that seems nice. It's different. I feel like it needs to be winter themed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't but, like... So how, how do you feel about those Corona commercials? That have like the the light up Christmas trees and stuff. What do you think about those? The light up palm trees. I mean, you deal with what you can, you know. If you're in a place <laughs> where, like, if I was in LA and it's still and it was palm trees, then you deal with it. But you don't need to flaunt it by wrapping the gifts in palm trees. You don't need to flaunt it. Stop flaunting it, like you. <laughs> really, a Christmas purist. Okay. Okay. The next <laughs> one is a pick an obviously wrapped present. <laughs> And the first one is clearly a skillet. <laughs> this is actually really funny. The second one is just a drill, like a drill that's wrapped up in wrapping paper. <laughs> the third one is a bicycle that's wrapped up in wrapping paper. Not like covering it, like each individual piece is individually wrapped. <laughs> that's really funny. And then there's a, an iron, like a clothing iron, and the cord coming out the back has a bow on it. <laughs> Which one do you like, Monica? The, uh, I'm going to go with the iron. Because who's giving someone an iron for Christmas? <laughs> I'm going to go with the, the, the bicycle. Okay, that one's really funny. Yeah. Uh, pick a Christmas-themed food. Whoa. I have not heard of any of these. Teddy Graham sleds? What, what is that? What kind of fucking Christmas wizard made this? Yeah, Teddy Graham sleds. We have strawberry Santas, reindeer cake pops, and a baked potato snowman. <laughs> wow. These are like blowing my mind a little bit. I've never heard of these. No, they all, they're very fan. It's probably Pinterest shit. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, definitely but Pinterest shit for sure. I think this Teddy Graham sled thing's really that doing it. looks fun. really good. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Strawberry Santas. Motherfucker. Why? <laughs> I just got my answer. Oh, did you want that one? Well, what one? Oh, oh, you mean you got your answer on the quiz. Yeah. I was confused. Sorry, I wasn't calling you a motherfucker. Oh, oh! I got a very, I got a or an ornament that I don't know if you're really gonna like, Monica, because it's kind of questioning your your lifestyle here. Me, it's challenging your your role. Challenging my role? Yeah, I got a Sophia ornament. It's just an ornament that says Sophia on it, and it said, "Is your name Sophia?" No, doesn't matter. You're a Sophia at heart. You love all things Christmas, and you've been wearing your Santa hat since July, which more, better describes you, I think. Yeah, it really does. Whoa, dude, we totally switched. What did you get? I got a cat person ornament. <laughs> we did switch. <laughs> You're certainly something. You're unique and definitely one of a kind. Everyone loves to have you around. That's totally you and not me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I think you're pretty unique and one of a kind, Monica. I'm not a cat person, though. But everyone wants to have you around, though. Also, if you're not a ornament. cat person, then why did I get you this giant cat onesie? <laughs> you don't pay attention. <laughs> I have a reindeer onesie, though. I saw that. I saw you walking around in it. I think you posted a picture on the, the, the book face, right? You have very floppy antlers, but that's okay. <laughs> I like sturdy antlers on my reindeer. Well, duh. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, though. That was a good one, I think. was good. The ornament looks weird. What is yours? Mine's is just a, a ball good? ornament, and it had, like, Sophia written on it. That's oh, all and it I just said yeah. Sophia. Okay. Yeah. This one was, like, a... It's like a lady in a skirt, but she's got a cat head. Weird. It was weird. And then they were weird, holding like, a Christmas tree. Hello Kitty situation. That's creepy. I don't know if I like that or not. It's like a very lifelike body, though. Ew. I don't know. Weird. I don't know if I enjoy that. I don't know how I feel about it. Speaking of cats, though, how excited are you to see our favorite podcast producer soon? I'm. I'm moderately excited to see her i am terrified to hear her oh yeah because she's gonna she's gonna make some serious noise she's loud as fuck she is she doesn't understand the whole idea that being a podcast producer means you have to be quiet we should make her take quizzes oh my gosh every answer just be (laughs) 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 somebody else snapchatted something making fun of like their stepdad for walking the cat with a leash Oh, someone else did? Yeah, and uh, I was uh, like... Am I a stepdad? I don't know what's happening. I, I feel like I'm already a stepdad, and I'm not even married to a person with a kid. <laughs> I just feel that way. You are kind of a step-cat dad. I you. am a step-cat dad. Why did you say you? I don't know. Cat dad? That's a weird... That is a weird thing to say. I think if I ever had a cat, I wouldn't refer to it as me being its father. 
I'd say it's, you, I'd say it's legal guardian, you know? Oh, yeah, okay. Or, like, best friend. What about, like... If you if you have a do- if you had a dog right now, would you call it yourself its mom? Yeah, what about a dog baby, a little baby. Oh, oh wow, puppy. I love puppies. Anyways, what if? So, do you let Delilah call you dad then? Nah, she doesn't really call me dad. She mostly just screams and scratches me. It's really she, it's like having a feral child, actually. <laughs> she's always yelling. She's like, "You're not my real dad." It's That's pretty much. Say. She's a rebellious teenager, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> and me, I'm just singing that Delilah song, you know, just trying to just belt it out. But um, <laughs> do you want to do the charity right now? We are at 55 minutes, so this was good to Yeah. Me. Yeah. This was good. Well, my charity is the show that I'm producing, of course. That's a good charity. It's for charity. It's nice. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it is. And it's, uh, it stresses me out. So I appreciate the people who come and support and who have already bought tickets. It is December 23rd. It's called The Night Before the Night Before. Get it? Because it's the, it's the two nights yeah, before. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and it'll uh, benefit the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. It's at Carco Theater in Renton, which is actually, like, really nice. And uh, it's right next to the community center that I went to, like, as a kid. So it's it's all kind of weird, but is cool. That the, is that the one that has the water slide, the community center? Uh, yeah, it's got the Henry Moses Aquatic Center I in front of I took my senior pictures there. Yeah. Uh, you took your senior pictures there? Is that what you just yep, said? that's what I just said. My mom had my brother and I's senior pictures at that park. I don't know why. But it's big. I that's mean, where they were. I was leaning up against the brick wall trying to be all Johnny Cool. You know what I'm saying? You picture it. You picture it in your mind. Wearing a sweatshirt, hooded sweatshirt. Like my Cooletta. That's right. That's exactly what people used to call me. No, they didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bailed on that Again. quite quickly. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, well, then I guess you have to come to the show because. I'm at the parlor that night. Otherwise, I would be there. You know, I'd be there. There's going to be a party afterwards. I'll go to the party afterward for sure. Okay. Is that cool? Um, Do we get a, are we going to party like it's 1994? It's a good year. No, that was four. You were four? I was six. Yeah. I'm old Ooh, balls. That would have been a real party, man. I'm old balls. <laughs> old balls. Old balls. Um, yeah, it's at eight. You can get tickets if you go to slash Renton. If you type that in, it'll direct you right to the ticket website. That's awesome. I'm smart. That's a good IT move, right? Monica Nevy dot com slash Renton. Yep. Watch. I'm, I'm writing See that what? down, so I'm going to put the link on uh, on our page. Oh, cool! And just click on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, fundraising happy. Uh, it's me, Courtney Shane Williams, and Brooks Macbeth, who is also from Renton. So it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great show. It goes to charity. You know, good time. I love it. This was fun. Or Monica. if you. If you're out of town, because obviously that's very Washington specific. Yeah. Uh, if you guys forgot or don't know, anytime you buy a T-shirt from us, it also goes to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. That's correct. Mm-hmm. That's good. So you can buy a T-shirt online. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Buy a T-shirt online. I'm going to go full screen on your face. I've had you in a little window this whole time. Is it okay? What? I didn't mean, I mean, not a whole time. I had to like do stuff on my computer, like write down funny things you said or like, <laughs> uh, or, like do the quiz. You know? Well, that's fine. No. Exactly. <laughs> but I think this was good. Do you want to say anything to the listener before we, we go? We're going to be together next week. Yay, I'm excited. You are excited? Good. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Mm-hmm. We're going to go bowling. I want to go bowling so bad. I love bowling, too. I want to go bowling. I want to go to Zoo Lights. I want to do that. Love- yeah, I want, ooh, the Enchanted Village ones. I've driven by, like, a lot of times. It's intense. Let's go to that one. Let's just do it. Yeah. I'm okay. Done. Okay. Well, is there anything you want to say to the listener before before they, we we end? I love you. Monica loves you, and I love <laughs> you too. I love I you. I hope that your commute is great. Maybe you're listening to us on your commute, and this made it better. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thanks. <laughs> now, uh, Monica and I have to go kill a bear, and she's going to teach me how. <laughs> so that's how it's going to work. Bye-bye.